Good evening. Good to have everybody out tonight, um, wherever you might be, or whatever way you're watching the service tonight. Uh, Madison will not be here, and we're going to have Brother Doug Gottby bring the message. Uh, but at this time, I'm going to turn it over to Janice for some music. Hey everybody, um, this is kind of a short notice thing, but this song has been on my heart for a while to sing and I wasn't sure when to do it, so I think this might be the best time. Um, the way things have been over the last several months, I know that a lot of people have lost loved ones to death and, and it was so hard to not have funerals or any kind of service, any kind of remembrance. and. Uh, I hope this song might give you a little comfort. Um, it's a song that I found after Neil passed away, and uh, I felt like it was Neil just telling me that everything's going to be all right. So I hope that it'll it'll touch people that have have loved ones to look forward to seeing heaven. Friends, I'm all saved. Our journey's over. I send you this word to give you some peace. For me, all is well now that I see. Yeah. 
Thank you. Isn't it great to be in God's house this evening? You know, God is so good to us, and that was a beautiful song. And she just reminded me of how it was at my own brother's funeral that I did in April. There was 10 people allowed to be there, and six of them were pallbearers, one of them was me, the minister. So that only left room for three people, and two of them were the funeral directors. So they're really serious when they talk about limiting the amount of people that can come to certain places. Which brings me to tonight's message. Wouldn't it be nice if once we came to the age of accountability and we accepted Christ as our Lord and Savior, that he would just treat us like little robots down here, that he would just move us from spot to spot where he wants us to be, why did he have to give us the ability to choose and to make choices? You know, you look at the television today and all of the evil that's going on, and I've talked to several people and they talk about being so afraid of this virus, afraid of the rioting and the looting that's going on. And I started thinking, you know, we have the right to choose. We could choose to live in fear or we can use or choose to live at peace with Christ. That choice is ours. Does that say nothing bad's going to happen in our life? Absolutely not. Because life shows up regardless. And life is showing up for some people right now. But all of us fear at some time of some sort. Some of us fear for our jobs, some fear for the future. Some of us, of us fear the unknown, and some of us uh, fear sickness. But we could be afraid of other people, we could be afraid of being alone. There's just many, many things that we could be afraid of. But regardless of our particular fear, all fear is a result of lack of trust and dependence on God. Did you hear what I said? All fear is a result of the lack of trust and dependence on God. When we are focused on God and His love for us, we are not afraid no matter what circumstances we face. You think about what God has done in your life, and you think about the choices that you have made, whether good or bad. Did you put God first when you were making those choices? We usually pull God out of the trunk when we really, really need Him. But when things are going good for us, we don't worry about it. When people start getting sick around us, there's death around us, we have to take care of the ones we love. Then we get concerned and we start calling on Jesus. But if you talk to Jesus today, why not if you haven't? I'm sure that if school started, there's a lot of people talking to him today. But before I get into the sermon here, I want to want to pray. Father, I come to you this evening in Jesus' name, asking you, Lord, to use me, asking you to speak through me, asking me to, or asking you to allow me to deliver this message that you played on my heart, Lord. And Father, I do thank you for the right to choose. The Lord, so many times we make the wrong choice, but we have a loving God, a forgiving God. And Father, for that we are so grateful. Lord, I pray that you embolden the spirit within me, give me a clarity of voice to speak, let me forget the things I need to forget and remember what I need to remember, Lord. And I just give you praise, honor, and glory in Jesus' name. The Bible tells us in 1 John 4.18, it says, There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, because fear involves torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. 
This is Jesus saying that if we love him the way we're supposed to love him, if we believe in him the way we're supposed to believe in him, then there is no fear because of his love for us. Jesus said we are not to fear, we are not to be anxious, we are not to fret, we are not to worry. He told us also in John, he said, peace I leave with you. My peace I give you, not as the world gives do I give you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. You know, Jesus came to this earth to seek and save those who are lost. And he said, peace I leave with you, my peace I leave with you. But you know, it wasn't always peaceful for the Lord here on earth. What he was talking about, I believe in this, when he says, my peace I leave with you, he means the peace that I have with God the Father, I leave with you. It didn't say that we weren't going to have trials and tribulations because folks we are. But fear is a result of separation from God, as I said earlier. And I know that from Genesis, the third chapter, it said, And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Then the Lord called to Abram and said, Where are you? Or Adam, I'm sorry. Where are you? So he said, I heard your voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. Now just think of what the Lord did. He called to him. He said, where are you? God knew where he was the whole time. But he answered, I heard you in the garden, and I was afraid. Why was he afraid? Because he was fearful of the result of a sin that they had just committed. So fear is a result of sin also, and that's part of the separation from God. When Adam disobeyed God, he became afraid of the consequences and tried to hide from God. How many times have we done that? How many times have we thought in our head, well, I can do this and get by with it, nobody knows. How many times have we done something that we knew we shouldn't be doing? And one of my favorite questions is, who are we when nobody's looking? How often do we change? Even as Christians, you get around a certain group of people, you act a certain way. You hang around the Christians, you act like the Christians. I was told a long time ago that if you hung around a barber shop long enough, you'd get a haircut. So I believe it's the same way with the people you hang around with. If you hang around with bad people, you're gonna end up being a bad person. But fear is also an indicator of distrust. In Deuteronomy, the Lord said, he is the one who goes before you. He will be with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you. Do not fear, nor be dismayed. So think about that. The Lord himself is with us. He goes with us before anything happens. He's right here. He knows everything that's going to happen. He tells us, do not be afraid, but do we trust God? Do we believe him? Then why do we fear? Why are we afraid of what's going on in this world today? Why are we afraid of the virus? God's in control, but do we believe it? Do we as Christian brothers and sisters believe strongly enough in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to believe that we don't have to worry about this? Christians have been reconciled to God through Jesus Christ and our relationship with him has been fully restored if we have accepted him. And because of that, we can have faith in God's care for every aspect of our life. Did you hear what I said? Every aspect of our life. How many times do we do things on our own without mentioning God? How many times do we do something without even talking to God about it? We're creatures of habit. We're born of a sinful nature. And if we're not careful, the devil will deceive us and tell us everything is all right that we could get through this, but we can't. We have to have faith in God's word and we have to believe what he tells us. If we continue to live in fear, what I would suggest is that we stand in front of the mirror and examine our own life. What would you see if you were God looking back at you? 
Would you be happy with yourself? The main question is, would God be happy with you? We have things that hinder our relationship with God. And it's mostly the way that we respond to fear. We could respond to fear the way that David did when he said, I sought the Lord and he heard me and he delivered me from all of my fears. So see, the thing is, what it gets right down to is, do we believe God's word? Everything that I'm reading to you comes straight out of God's word. And David said, I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. So regardless of the reason for your fear, God is more than able to comfort you, to protect you, to guide you, and to love you. Because that's what God is. God is love. He will deliver us from our fears when we place our faith in Him. And sometimes we even need to confess our sins. The Bible tells us He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. What a loving God is that. Amen. Folks, we live in sin. We are sinners saved by grace. God does not want us to live in fear. He wants us to be happy. He wants us to love Him. He wants us to make the choices to follow Him. And the easier it is to trust His Word and depend on Him to care for us because if you believe what's written in this Bible, and if you read the words that God has inspired these people to write, then we don't have to worry. We don't have to be fearful of anything. And we can have this peace that God offered us in bad times. You know, we hear a lot of analogy in the Bible of farmers and planting and trees and the branches. And I chose this one, it says, I am the vine, the true vine, and my father is a vine dresser. Each branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. Now think about that just for a moment. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes, meaning that we have to go through some training from time to time. It says, abide in me and I in you, as a branch cannot bear fruit on its own unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. And without me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered. And they gather them and throw them into the fire and they are burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it will be done for you. By this, my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit so you will be my disciples. Now what fruit is he talking about? Think about it. The fruit of the Holy Spirit says what? It produces love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, gentleness, faithfulness, goodness, and self-control. That self-control is really difficult, but God promises us that we can have peace if we have the fruit of the Spirit within us. If we have accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and our Savior, then the Holy Spirit came to dwell within each and every one of us, and we are to bear fruit, and that fruit is being the branch that is attached to the limb, that's attached to the trunk, which is God Almighty. Everyone experiences times of emotional chaos and makes it seem like it's impossible to sense peace, but it's not. If we believe what God tells us, we get on our knees, we can feel this peace, we can feel the entrance of the Holy Spirit in our life. But the Lord can provide an inner contentment in the darkest and most turbulent periods of our life. There have been times when, you know, you think, well, how am I going to get out of this? I've, I've got myself in a mess. How am I going to get out of this? Well, you start with getting on your knees. You get on your knees and you start confessing to the Lord. And then you confess to whoever you might have sinned against. But the key to this peace that God promises us 
is the key is abiding in Jesus Christ. If you don't know Christ, I suggest that you know Him tonight before you leave this building. But abiding in Him means putting all of our faith in Him and trusting He will strengthen us through any hardship. As Christians, we are inseparably connected to the Lord just as the branches are attached to the vine. Life-giving nutrients run through the plant to every shoot. And so it is with Christ and His followers. If you're not feeling healthy today, if you're not feeling chipper today, then why don't we ask the Lord? Why don't we pray to Him? Why don't we say, God, just cleanse me of anything I've done wrong. Forgive me. Let me serve you today. I want to be your follower. But do we do that? If people look at you out on the street, do they know whether or not you're a Christian? By your actions? By your words? God's peace can flow right into us. No matter what is done to us or how life disappoints us, His nourishment will never be cut off. In the days leading up to His crucifixion, Jesus assured His followers that He would continue to provide. He tells us in John 16, He said, These things I have spoken to you, so that in Me you may have peace. In the world you have tribulations, Jesus said, but take courage. I have overcome the world. So who's in control of this world? Not the people, not the government, not the writers, but Jesus Christ himself. He says that we're going to have these trials and tribulations. But he also says he's overcome the world. Nothing can stop his peace from reaching us if we will allow it. If we will make that choice that we want the peace of God, and if we will do what we're supposed to do, then he'll definitely do what he's supposed to do. Every person at some point in their life is going to face hardship. But no believer has to give in to anxiety. We don't have to do it, folks. We have an awesome God caring for us. If we trust him to see us through our challenges, he will pour his strength his guidance and his comfort into us. Folks, you can have the peace of Jesus Christ living in you this very moment. And in him, according to Philippians, we find peace that surpasses all understanding. Have you ever just gotten alone in a room and Maybe not got on your knees, but just sat down in a chair, closed your eyes, and started talking to the Lord. Have you ever felt that warm Holy Spirit just envelop you and just be there with you? We can have that unconditional peace. Because when hardships come, a person's heart is prone to feel anxious and unsettled. But we as believers do not have to feel that way. We can be at peace even in the worst of times. The Bible says that God loves us and will be our rock. And Psalms 18 says, The Lord is my rock and my portion, my God. I subscript that whom I will trust, my shield and the horn of my salvation and my stronghold. So think about that. God is almighty. God is all powerful. God is everywhere he's omnipotent it says i will call upon the lord who is worthy to be praised so shall i be saved from my enemies the bible also tells us in matthew it says do not worry saying what shall we eat what shall we drink or what shall we wear for the pagans run after these things and your heavenly father knows that you need them but seek ye first the kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, he tells us, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. We don't need to borrow trouble for tomorrow to worry about today because, you know, we may not be around tomorrow. We not, may not be around in the next 20 seconds. Only God knows when. So why do we 
choose to worry? Why do we pick on things that we can worry about? Because we can't know peace if our eternal security is in question. If you're not right with God tonight, and you don't know about your eternal destiny, then you're not going to live at peace, folks. I know that for a fact. I know that for a fact because for 47 years, I wasn't at peace. And then when I accepted the Lord as my Savior, He changed my life completely. But I promised Him, Lord, if you'll save me, I'll serve you. And He did, and I'm doing the best that I can to keep my part of the deal. But once we become believers, it's vitally important that we make a regular practice of confronting, confessing, and turning away from our wrongs. We need to spend a lot of time in God's Word, especially this day and age. If we don't spend time with God, we're going to believe the devil and we're going to let sin disrupt our fellowship with the Lord. And the Bible tells us in Psalm 66, it says, If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear. In other words, what it's saying is sin and peace cannot live in the same heart. Are we perfect? Absolutely not. Will we be perfect? Someday when we get into our eternal life, we will be. But a heart cannot hold both anxiety and peace at the same time. You can't sit here and be afraid and be at peace. One or the other rules because they both can't inherit the same heart. Worrying about a troubled situation and seeking a solution apart from God leaves us in a state of unease. When we get in that state of unease, we, we just really create situations for ourselves that we can't get out of. We start thinking things that, well, if God had only done this, if God would do this for me, I'd do that. How many times have you promised God that if, you'd, if He'd do something, that you would do something? As soon as you got what you wanted from God, you forgot all about your part of the promise. Well, I want to tell you something, folks. God didn't. God knows exactly what you told Him, and what you discussed with Him. When we focus upon the Lord, and we trust His provisions, anxiety and doubt flee. Isaiah, you can read that it says, you will keep Him in perfect peace, meaning God will keep us in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on you, meaning God, because we trust in Him. If you trust in Him, the steadfastness of your mind, you'll have perfect peace. And you say there ain't nothing perfect in this world. You're absolutely right, but I'll tell you what, God can make it a whole lot better, folks. A pure, restful heart is a valuable asset in this crazy world. It's so sad to watch the people do the destruction that they're doing in these major cities and nobody seems to care. People are getting hurt, people are getting killed, and nobody seems to care. But you know, we can always, as believers, call upon the Lord, and He will soothe our soul. He'll make us feel better. He'll quiet our mind, and He'll bring peace to our heart. But the question tonight is, do you know the Lord or do you just know about the Lord? I knew about him for a long time, but I didn't know him. Do you have the confidence tonight that you can say, I'm at peace with God right this very moment? If God called me home right now, there's not a shadow of a doubt in my mind that before my body hit this floor, my soul would be in heaven with the Lord. That's how sure I am, because I know what God did in my life. You know what he's done in your life. The Bible says, oh, you of little faith, why are you so fearful? Why are we fearful? If we know Christ, we have confidence and peace. We don't have to fear anything. 
But if we don't know Him tonight, we rely on our own panic-stricken prayers. If we only talk to God in our times of trouble, and if we don't confess our sins to Him, God doesn't listen to us. The only time God listens to a sinner is when He says, Lord, I'm sorry. Accept me. Lead me. Save me. And then He listens. But we can't go out here sinning all day long and every night and say, God, I'm sorry. Check. God, I'm sorry. Check. Doesn't work like that, folks. Maybe our spiritual growth sometimes is just stagnated. Or perhaps we just simply want to make sure that our heart is clear before the Father. But in either case, we can learn to pray like King David did if you have the nerve to pray. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxieties. And see if there is any wicked way in me and lead me in the way of everlasting. Do you have the nerve tonight to say, God, test my heart? Do you have the nerve tonight to say, God, examine me and where I'm wrong, correct me? Do you have that relationship with him tonight? You know, it scares me so much to see so many people that are going to hell for no reason. Well, not for no reason, the reason for not accepting Christ. But being a preacher and being a devout Christian, you just want to go up and grab them and shake them. And say, what's wrong with you? Can't you see where we're at in this world today? Can't you see the mess that we have allowed ourselves to get into by listening to the devil? We are playing right in the devil's backyard. But can we say, examine my heart, O oh Lord? The people that don't want to choose God, I just can't understand it because I know that there's people in my own family that have not accepted Jesus as their Savior. It's so simple that it's scary. God created us. It, 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 in that same Psalms in 139, it says, For you formed my inward parts. You covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works, and that my soul knows very well. My frame was not hidden from you. When I was made in secret and skillfully wrought in the lowest parts of the earth, your eyes saw my substance, being yet unformed. And in your book they are written, the days fashioned for me, when as yet there were none of them. Good Lord has given us a certain amount of days. When David was talking about this, he was still in his mother's womb. He said, I, not one day has passed yet, but you don't have any I have. If today was your day, are you ready? I am. I believe everything that I read in God's word. Do I do it all? Absolutely not. Do I do the best I can? Yes. Can I do better? Yes. Can you do better? I'm sure you can. I'm sure we all can. But it starts by asking Him to forgive us of our sins. Cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Come into our life. Think of how miserable your life was before you accepted Christ. I could speak for myself. I thought I was on top of the world, and actually I was under the bus. If you don't know him, accept him tonight. Just lift up your eyes to heaven and say, God, I'm so sorry for the life that I've lived. I'm so sorry that I've rejected you for so long. Come into my heart. 
forgive me of my sins. Be my Lord and Savior. That's all it is. But then believe what you pray. Get into God's Word. Study it every single day because this is your communication with God Himself. God the Father, the Creator of all creation is willing to talk to you through His Word tonight. I just pray that when we make our choices, we choose to follow Jesus. Father, I just come to you once again with a grateful heart. I pray, Lord, for those people that don't have a relationship with you. I just lift them up individually and collectively, Lord, not knowing their names, but Father, you know each and every one of them. Father, I just ask that you touch their hearts soften their hearts, Lord, and let them understand where they're going wrong. Father, I believe that our time is short here on this earth. There's so many people that need you, Father. I just wish that we could reach every single one of them and show them the light that comes from Jesus Christ. Lord, thank you for this church. Thank you for the congregation. Thank you for the people that are watching live stream. Father, I just ask a special blessing on each and every one of them. We love you and we praise you in Jesus' name.